Welcome to Bay Area Psychology. Tonight we have the privilege of meeting with local marriage and family therapist Jennifer Morse to discuss her newly released book, Apprentice to Power. I began Jennifer's book, A Spiritual Journey of Painful Choices and Transformation, on a plane to Los Angeles. I was so quickly engaged that I finished the book the same evening. As a woman and a therapist, I've also struggled with the incongruity between my personal life and the insight and direction I can provide to others. Jennifer provides a warm and courageous role model to challenge behaviors that no longer work using ritual and prayer as a path to transformation. So we are in for a treat. I want to thank you for joining us. I know you're in the middle of a book tour yourself. I am, Mary. So, it's great to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you making time to come in. And I know this is your uh, local, this is your home. This place is. Practice. And yes, I have a practice in Campbell. In Campbell, okay. So you, how long, when you do a book tour, how long are you away from your practice? Mm. Well, actually, uh, my practice has changed its nature, and instead of seeing people on a weekly basis, I see them on an as-need basis, and oh. so it frees up a lot of time for not only am I on tour, but I'm also writing two other books right now. Oh, so, you are? Yeah, and okay. trying to be a mother and a wife. And <laughs> okay, so you have plenty of hats. Yes. Okay. Hats right now. Well, now, um, as I mentioned, I began this book uh, when I was on a trip, so as I got into it, um, that felt very appropriate to me because the book itself is a description of your own trip and your own yes. journey. It is my journey. And, uh, you know, what struck me uh, about this was how personal in nature uh, this book was mm -hmm. and is. Well, you know, the, the idea for this book came, I studied with a shaman, Lynn Andrews, and uh, I went to see her after several years of working with her. For years I had talked with her about wanting to write a book, and uh, I went to see her and my life was in disarray, even though uh, on the surface it looked very good. You know, I was a professional woman, well-educated, had a successful private practice, was going well in my life, but really I was in a very dysfunctional uh, abusive relationship that was devastating to my spirit. I showed up on her door kind of half dead from all the efforts of new mothering and also uh, from the efforts of trying to make a relationship work that just was not working. And the failure of that ongoing effort truly was debilitating to me and to my self-confidence. So I met with Lynn and uh, she said to me, She's always practical. So the first thing she said to me was, you need to get more rest. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, you know, what do you do in interaction with your husband when you're uh, speaking with him? I'd never thought of that. But I realized that I got smaller, literally. In a confrontation or interaction, I huddled. I kind of pulled my arms in and even my feet. And uh, she said, well, I want you to do just the opposite. I want you to stand up, get on your feet, and I want you to think you've just won the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. And I had never done that. You know, as much as I thought I knew how to take a stand in my personal relationships, I had never done that. And I always based, you know, trying to make harmony. I was a pleaser and I wanted things to go well. And so I, I didn't want to stand up. You know, that was a big challenge for me. And and I did, but I was more uncomfortable with how my life was going and how the relationship was going. I really felt awkward when my ex-husband, you know, I felt was condescending. And uh, it was so painful that I was willing to make that stand. And when I stood up, things began to change, literally and metaphorically. I began to know who I was. I drew a circle of power around myself. I saw myself through my own eyes instead of through another's. And those changes began to happen. So it sounds like for you, which is so true of so many of us, we have to get uncomfortable enough mm -hmm. and to be, um, in some ways, uh, have enough pain or despair that we're willing to try something, uh, no matter how, um, how odd that might be. Yes. Now, one of the things, you mentioned your ex-husband. Mm -hmm. Your book really talks about the story of that relationship. Yes. And I'm wondering if uh, he read this book. Well, I don't know if he did or not. I don't speak with him in those ways, okay. so uh, I really couldn't answer that question. But, you know, just an addendum to that story, when I went to see Lynn that day, I was in a lot of discomfort. And it wasn't just that suggestion that she made to me that changed my life, but it was at that meeting that she said to me, Jennifer, why don't you write a book about all the, this ancient system of higher consciousness that I pass on to you? Write a book about it and say how you put it into your life. And 
when she did that, she pierced the heart of my ambitions. You know, this is what a teacher who's good will always do. They'll throw you back on yourself. And so she gave me a gift of beauty, really, in that opportunity. Write this book. It was my secret dream to write that book, but I thought it would be enormously presumptuous to ever consider it. Mm -hmm. So she gave me back that dream. She didn't say to me, you know, Jennifer, you are in a dysfunctional relationship and you ought to do something about it. I probably just would have said, you're right, I am, and nothing would have changed. Instead, she put me in circumstances where the experience would change me. She knew my life was a wreck. If I had to write a book about those teachings of higher consciousness and the empowerment of women, I was going to have to clean my life up to write it. That, you know what, that's a key to your book that I, I know touched me and I mentioned in the monologue, is as a counselor, I know that we often may feel a lot of pressure to have kind of our, our personal life, our personal world, um, be this sort of model of uh, wellness because, of mm. course, we went to school and we learned what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to use eye messages and yada, yada. Right. And so... Um, and when we did, everything would be great. That's right. And we'd be the perfect <laughs> role model. And so, so you know, what's, what's marvelous about this is that you really put your journey and your own humanity in a place where I know as a counselor, um, from myself that I found uh, encouraging in a oh, sense good. that it's like you know um, the truth is that even if you have a well of knowledge from whatever source application mm -hmm. has its own challenge and you know? no one on this planet has it has it perfectly together we're all living with challenges and we're all living with our frailties and our vulnerabilities and if we could just learn to see them as our teachers and at the heart of those disabilities are our strengths if we will go through them. So if you just look at the relationship that I was in, in a dysfunctional relationship, if my ex-husband could get inside my brain and confuse me with his ideas, and he was a psychologist so he was very good with ideas and I was susceptible to ideas and so you know he would you know say this long string of pathological words about me and I'd go oh god maybe that's true and so as long as he could get inside and snake me around and confuse me I knew I needed to get stronger he was my teacher and he was a very good teacher I did learn to see the truth through my own eyes instead of through his eyes as a result of him challenging me in that way that's a lot of um, responsibility to take. I mean, I know my own life when I am willing to see the world as it is, mm. then I'm then challenged to do something with that information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as I'm, I'm, I'm in denial or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm being victimized, mm -hmm. yeah, then... It, then we can just stay and nothing needs to change. Exactly. Well, they do. Yes. Right. <laughs> They just need to go to yes. some sort of meeting. That's you know? right, yeah. yeah. I've tried to live my life that way. It just didn't work. No, it doesn't work, does it? And I think we're all so hungry for serenity of spirit right now, for some yeah. sense of the sacredness and the beauty and the mystery of life. And I think that's what uh, the threads of shamanism, which is really just the ability to create your life with beauty, you know, recreate your life with beauty, those tools, uh, that sacredness woven into the psychology uh, really made a big difference for me. You talk about um, several different rituals that I guess Lynn had asked you to do in yes. your own healing process. Yes. And, uh, and it's, I loved uh, the difficulty you had lighting uh, oh, lighting the stick at the, the beginning. The ceremony for the life and death prayer was... Yes, uh, yeah. that was particularly marvelous that um, I vividly picture you on the beach having difficulty uh, yeah. getting the fire to happen. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like, this isn't going the way it's supposed to. <laughs> that was really a funny story. You know, I went to see Lynn and I thought, uh, I thought, this will be great. I'm going to go see this woman of power and maybe I'll have an ecstatic spiritual experience and... Uh, maybe fairy dust glimmering out of the side of my eyes and instead I had a my bubble was burst immediately she was very practical with me uh, quite confrontive she could see immediately that I was a Puella an eternal child and she so she asked me she said what's your act of power and I said what I had no idea what she was talking about and she said an act of power is how you create your life with beauty in a way that touches your life and other people's lives with beauty it's really dedicating yourself to living your dream what's your dream 
And I went, uh, I, you know, I was afraid to say, to actually say out loud what my dream was. And eventually, you know, I did. And uh, so she gave me that ceremony to where in the, you create a life prayer arrow and a death prayer arrow. And the death prayer arrow, you list on it everything that would be your blocks to creating your dream in your life, to manifesting it into form. Which, you know, for years we've been listening to Joseph Campbell talk about sure. live your bliss. But no one tells you that when you start to live your bliss that every obstacle that you have to, it's going to come up for you to resolve. Absolutely. So, uh, Do you think, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, do you think that's tied to that willingness to take responsibility? You know, there's a saying that we work with called, that says, the first lesson of power is that you're all alone. Huh. And the last lesson of power is that we're all one. What I think that means is that in the first lesson of power, you have to take responsibility for the ways that your life is in disarray. And you have to clean it up and heal it. And you have to go into those little pockets that you hold inside that are out of harmony and maybe have old tension or pain and dialogue with that part and resolve it. And and move into greater harmony. Once you do that, then you come into understanding naturally the last lesson of power, which is we're all one. You realize that resonance with everything, with the trees, with the vastness of the sky as the sun filters through the clouds, with the smell of the bay as you're walking along the trails. You, you have that connectedness with people. You, you recognize that that uh, story that says what you do to one strand of the web you do to the entire web yes. and, and an act of power is a great way to move you from the first lesson to the last lesson because in that act of power you will be mirrored back every single area that you need to resolve we're going to need to take a quick break we'll come back to this stay with us when we return we'll learn more about Jennifer's path Welcome back. Okay, when we took a break, we were talking about um, acts of power. Yes. Okay. And I think we just talked about the death arrow. Yes, we did. you list everything on it and all your blockages. Like maybe for me, I know some of mine were oh, procrastination, uh, self-doubt, insecurity, 